Game Boy Games. What up guys, my name is Stan from Random Tens, and after thinking I was finally done making videos on rare Nintendo products, I was swiftly reminded about the other half of their gaming empire, their handhelds. In the past, I've talked about the rarest Game Boy and 3DS systems, but for some reason or another, I never made follow-up videos showcasing the rarest games in their respective libraries. However, now that I've gotten through all of the major Nintendo consoles, I think it's the perfect time to circle back around and shine the spotlight on the revolutionary Nintendo Game Boy and its collectible lineup of games. Although, before we proceed, it's worth mentioning that this video will strictly be covering rare titles released for the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, rather than covering everything under the massive Game Boy umbrella. It doesn't mean I forgot about the hundreds of Game Boy Advance games out there, I'd just rather save that system for its own video later this year. And so, with the criteria made clear, I'll shut my mouth and get into the showcase. Here are the rarest Game Boy games ever released. Even though he's become a bit of a punchline in recent years, there's no denying that if you grew up during the 8-bit era, Mega Man was no laughing matter. Appearing in many critically beloved games, as well as a few spin-off titles, for a time, Mega Man was Capcom's reigning king. And so, when the Game Boy became a household name, the decision to put the Blue Bomber on handhelds was a no-brainer. However, I imagine that today, even Capcom themselves can't figure out why Mega Man 4 and Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy are harder to capture than Dr. Wily after a boss battle. This is another one of those instances where, although stock wasn't as plentiful as a Pokemon or a Mario title, these games were made widely available upon release. However, nowadays, these two are among the most difficult for Mega Man fans to add to their collections because they're both tricky to find and crazy expensive. Of the two, Mega Man 4 is the less valuable, though it'll still run you about $300 complete in box according to recent sales. On the other hand, its rarer sequel hasn't sold on the secondhand market in some time, and based on older numbers will sell complete in box for around $450 US. So if you love everything Mega Man and manage to find a good deal on either of these games, make sure to pick them up, because although Capcom seems indifferent to their old flagship character, it doesn't mean that we've forgotten why he rocked in the first place. From one controversial company to the next. Before they enraged gamers with their mishandling of the iconic Metal Gear Solid franchise, Konami had a similar blunder with Castlevania Legends. Referred to as something of an embarrassment for the series by its own producer, this 1998 Game Boy title contradicts the Castlevania timeline and caused longtime fans to shake their heads at many of its questionable decisions. Despite its lack of series awareness, the game itself got decent reviews, and surprisingly enough, an almost pristine factory sealed version sold for over $12,000 a few years ago, making this the most expensive Game Boy title ever sold. Despite that ridiculous price tag though, Castlevania Legends still regularly sells for about $170 complete in box, and can even be yours for around $80 loose if you want to see what all the fuss is about. So, despite trying their hardest to make the world forget about it, it seems we're still not ready to put this controversial title to bed. Now, if only I could forget the word pachinko. You know, throughout this series, I've admittedly been guilty of really only catering to North American collectors. I mean, sure, I've talked about rare UK consoles before, and I even put a picture of the PAL Super Nintendo on the thumbnail for the rarest SNES games, but overall when it comes to games specifically, I've been very biased towards my home continent. So today, let's change that by talking about a game that never saw the light of day in the West, Trip World. This Sunsoft published platformer was only ever made available in Japan and PAL regions, and was released in 1992 and 1993 respectively. As you can probably guess, the European version of the game is almost infinitely rarer than its Japanese counterpart, and due to its release being more experimental than anything, the game was launched with extremely low numbers. Since then, its legend has only grown, and at this point there are no recorded sales of complete in-box copies that I could find. However, it does sell for about £140 loose on average, which is about $200 over here. So to all of my European collectors out there, thanks for watching this series, and who knows, maybe you'll find a copy of Trip World at a local game shop or something. Now, if only we could figure out why the heck you guys still get games so much later than the rest of the world. What do you get when you take an anthropomorphic vegetable and throw in some addicting puzzle-style gameplay? Well, apparently you get some of the rarest video games ever released, because not one, but two of the most limited Game Boy titles are a part of the Puzzle Boy series. Spud's Adventure and Amazing Tater, both released in 1991, are games where you play as a puzzle-solving potato, and no, I am not making that up. 
So what makes these two games so collectible all of these years later? Well, once again, the easiest explanation I can give is the word Atlas. Yes, once again, this Japanese-based publisher is responsible for making the North American version incredibly limited, and because of this, it's very possible that either of these games could be the rarest Game Boy title ever released based on supply alone. Today, these games are so rare that even loose versions sell for anywhere between $140 and $200 on average, and apparently, complete in-box copies have even sold for somewhere in the thousands. So if by some miracle you come across either of these vegetable-themed titles, make sure to butter up the seller and prepare to fry your bank account, because these taters will cost you. If those last two games are the rarest based on supply, then you'd better believe that this colorful platformer is the rarest in terms of insufferable demand. When this WayForward Technologies title was released for the Game Boy Color in 2002, nobody gave it a chance of succeeding, despite the hours of fun gameplay it provided. The fact was, the Game Boy Advance was already on store shelves, and nobody was buying original Game Boy games anymore. Fast forward to today, however, and it seems that everybody was wrong, because almost 15 years later, the Shantae series isn't only successful, it's thriving. Starring the purple-haired half-genie by the same name, demand for the entire Shantae library has been growing ever since Risky's Revenge gained steam during the early 2010s, and now with Half-Genie Hero only months away, the franchise is primed to explode once again. And of course, as we've seen with the Fire Emblem franchise, demand years later causes earlier games, sometimes even flawed ones, to skyrocket in price. So this is the sort of situation where this game will only keep becoming more coveted as time goes on. So how much exactly will this cult classic cost you? Well, to put it mildly, a lot, because at the time of this video, its last known complete inbox sale was February 2016, and it went for a near record $723, showing that as supply drops and demand continues to grow, this game keeps becoming more and more limited with each passing year. So yes, even though it wasn't produced with a large initial shipment, in terms of supply, it's technically not the rarest game ever released on the original Nintendo handheld. However, when you account for the low number of copies produced in conjunction with the series' ever-growing fanbase, I feel comfortable stating that Shantae for the Game Boy Color is the rarest Game Boy game ever released. And if you disagree, then I guess we'll have to settle our differences with a dance-off. Well, there you have it, a showcase of some of the rarest Game Boy games ever released. Also, it's worth remembering that this is a showcase, not a top 5 countdown. So, if you didn't see a specific game on this list, don't worry, it's probably coming in a sequel. Anyways, make sure you let me know your favorite Game Boy or Game Boy Color game in the comments section below. Follow us on Twitter if you have any questions or just want to talk. And as I always say guys, happy hunting baby rhinos. Also, just a quick heads up, uh, we recently hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel, and I'm making a video to celebrate. So, if there's no video next Saturday morning, it's probably because I'm making it a little grander and a little bigger than I usually would. Uh, so, because of that reason, it might just take an extra week. So, if you don't see anything, I just thought it was worth letting you guys know. Also, with Pokemon coming up, I have been a very, very busy person lately, so I just thought, it, again, it was worth letting you guys know. That's another contributing factor, why it might take a little longer than I thought. But... Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.